people of California want. In moments, we'll hear from, Aunt, from Mary Ann Mendoza, whose son was killed by an illegal immigrant. But first, Julissa Arce is a former dreamer. She came to the United States from Mexico as a young girl. Despite being undocumented, she climbed the ladder at Goldman Sachs using falsified documents, and she is now a legal American citizen. Julissa, good to uh, have you with us um, tonight. You know, I guess the, you, the biggest question you. is, you know, the, the president offered 1.8 million dreamers to be able to stay here, a fix for even more than the number that we know exist in the country in return for some funding for the wall. And Democrats, they, they backed away from that deal. They won't take that deal. So doesn't it make it kind of difficult to pin this on the president at this point? Yeah, well, you know, I think that, that it's important to, to sort of set a timeline here. Uh, the president rescinded DACA on September 5th of 2007, so the reason why we're even in these discussions about making a DACA deal is because the president himself ended the DACA program. But that's, but that's, not a, that's a little that, bit disingenuous, I have to jump in, because the truth of the matter is, let, let's play President Obama on this in 2012, when, when the program came into being. This is not amnesty. This is not immunity. This is not a path to citizenship. It's not a permanent fix. This is a temporary stopgap measure that lets us focus our resources wisely while giving a degree of relief and hope to talented, driven, patriotic young people. It was always intended to be temporary, Julissa. Yeah, it was only intended to be a temper, and he is right that it wasn't, that it was not amnesty, that it didn't give people a path to citizenship, which, which, uh, which was unfortunate. But fortunately, President Obama did act, and it allowed 800,000 people to have a life in the United exactly. States. Exactly. So to now be the president's offering 1.8 million people and also a path to citizenship as part of that. He's offering even more than what President Obama had in the original deal. So why won't Democrats, who say they want this, that they want to protect uh, dreamers and, you know, children as part of the DACA program. Why won't Democrats get on board with that? Well, I think it's important to also highlight the fact that President Trump struck down deals that were presented to him, bipartisan deals that were presented to him in January and February and even earlier this month that weren't the toxic plans that he put forward. So, so it you wasn't blame just, him, but you don't blame Democrats people... for, the, for turning down the offer. Are you equally angry with both sides? I am disappointed with Democrats for not holding the line when they mm -hmm. could have. There could have been a deal made when they had leverage when we were trying to pass spending bills, uh, and they didn't do that, which is really unfortunate. However, they were put in a really difficult position because, yes, we're giving 1.8 million uh, undocumented dreamers a path to citizenship, and we were giving money for the wall. However, we were also going to slash legal immigration by 50 percent well, under the I, president's plan. I mean, we've, we've, we've slashed limb so, immigration many times in this country. You know, it's fascinating because I was just watching Brett Baer a little while ago was interviewing the ambassador from Mexico, and he was talking about the hundreds of thousands of people that they do not allow to stay in their country, that they repatriate to Honduras because they have to control their borders. He said, I want to work with the United States to make sure that we control our borders. So why is it such an alien concept to you? You, that uh, you know, people would want there to be um, protection for the borders, and that it's not okay to, to be here and overstay your visa or to come here illegally. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's definitely not foreign to me to uh, to want to have a secure border. I mean, I've lived in the United States since I was 11 years old, so I've dealt with immigration issues personally and professionally. So it's not something that's foreign to me. But I do think that sometimes we conflate issues. So we're trying to conflate the issue of illegal immigration with how people are able to come to the country legally. And if we slash legal immigration, so we're slashing. We're telling people come here legally, do it the right way. But by the way, we're also yeah, you, slashing we're, as, as by. A you're allowed to regulate that you're what that to number is going to be. Right you don't have to have an open-ended number. You are allowed as a, as a country to say, you know what, this year we're going to take this many, next year we're going to take that many. That, I, I can't understand why you would have a problem with that. It's not an open-ended discussion. <laughs> But it should be an open-ended discussion. That's, that is correct. What you just said, that it should be an open-ended discussion, is exactly how no, it I'm should work. No, I'm saying what I meant was it's not an open-ended question. You, you can't just assume that as many people not. want to come in can come in. That's not the way it works. 
Absolutely, I don't think that that's the way it works either. Uh, I can tell you from personal experience that it, it, you know, it took me 20 years to be able to become an American citizen, and yeah. it's a very difficult process. That. But yeah. we're also then blaming people and saying, you know, you should make, you should become legal. You should. We 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 often ask people, why don't you become legal? Why were you undocumented for 15 years without understanding the fact that the line that we often talk about doesn't exist? And so we're telling people, get legal, don't come here illegally, and at the same time we're well, saying. 1.8 million people have been borders. offered a, a pathway to, to, to citizenship and the ability to stay here legally. So, um, but that was it was it was rejected. So, all right, thanks. Um, I'm out of time, but thanks for being here, Jalissa. Good to see you. So, Thank my next guest me. has been deeply impacted by the issue of illegal immigration. Her son, Sergeant Brendan Mendoza, was on his way home from his shift as a police officer in Mesa, Arizona, four years ago, when he was killed in a head-on collision by someone who turned out to be an illegal immigrant who was driving 